dear brothers and sisters welcome to chapter 11 of uh, john gospel as we go through the bible one chapter at a time uh, this journey is uh, been amazing that as we go through chapter by chapter we get to know the full counsel of god the full counsel like we won't miss anything uh, we will know everything that jesus has to say about life about death about future about grace about uh, about holiness about uh, everything we will cover everything because as we go through the bible we cannot skip anything you know we cannot have favorites and so we are going to get into this exciting part of of john gospel uh, which is uh, which is our personal relationship with god yesterday i talked about how uh, knowing the voice of god how we can get familiar with the voice of god and uh, as we continue in the same thing you know jesus christ here he is uh, doing this final uh, miracle that is raising lazarus from the dead so this, this is the seventh sign so there are many miracles covered in the gospels in fact there are more miracles that are covered in gospels but detailed seven miracles the first one the miracle in galilee uh, uh, cana in galilee the wedding feast second one was uh, the official's son uh, son or uh, you know the official child we don't know and then the third thing is uh, we see you know uh, I'll, <laughs> let me go back and i don't want to miss the uh order you know the third one is <clears throat> the healing the sick person you know at the pool of bethesda the paralyzed man and then the fourth one was feeding of the 5000 people and the fifth one was walking on the water and the sixth one was healing the blind man on chapter 9 and then here we are with chapter 7 the last one is that jesus christ raises lazarus from the dead every sign has a meaning every sign has a meaning like we saw in 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 uh, in cana it's uh, the joy the jesus christ turning the water into wine and then he revealed his glory that was the purpose and the second miracle that john is highlighting this is not the second i mean like jesus did many miracles but john's gospel john chooses to highlight certain miracles and the second one was about the uh, about the official's son and again in uh, uh, in the capernaum area and here jesus christ you know he he says you know he gives life your son will live he says and so many people believed there because jesus is someone who gives life and then the third sign is healing the disabled man you know he chose to he said pick up your mat and walk he said don't sin anymore so here the purpose of this sign is that we will continue in the ways of lord after we there are certain sins that could make us paralyzed and this is said you know continue in the ways of god and then fourth sign is feeding of the 5000 we understand what the purpose was if we see the whole chapter it's about jesus christ being the bread of life and the water of life and then so that he gives energy to us you know to live this life on this earth and beyond and then the fifth sign is to walking on water where the nature itself itself is is, is obedient to jesus christ and it says i am i am there you don't be afraid and then in blind uh, the blind man being uh, eyes being opened here jesus christ you know he says that he is the light of the world and the spiritual meaning is he is the light of the world again today we are seeing that lazarus being raised is the that jesus christ is the resurrection so you see everything is covered in this seven signs and miracles so what a beautiful thing and also there are six to seven statements where jesus says i am the living i am the bread i am the light i am the shepherd i am the gate i am the also sometimes called the door and uh, i am the resurrection and the life and so so you see there are lot of statements like this almost seven statements and seven i am statements and seven signs so it's a beautiful uh, gospel if you uh, read it like this so just fascinating i just i just love this so let's let's look at chapter 11 today so jesus christ is is gone to a place um, um, a little far away from bethany it's almost like a two days journey if you walk around 20 miles from bethany bethany if you rem- if you know is like very like close to jerusalem it's almost like on the other side of mount of olives so it's almost like 2 miles from jerusalem and jesus christ has gone 20 miles from bethany and uh, bethany is a place where mary martha lazarus two sisters and one brother they are living there two sisters and a brother they love jesus christ jesus christ loves them he says you know uh, in in verse 5 it says now jesus loved martha her sister and 
Lazarus. All three of them, Jesus loved them. So it's just a close friendship. When Jesus Christ was here, you know, he had this nice close friendship. He was not like, okay, I'll go sit in the forest uh, at night time and then I'll come and show up and then teach and then go back to the forest. He was living with the people. He was talking to them. He was joking with them. He was laughing. He was, he was having food with them. He was, he was going through their struggles. And today also we'll see he was weeping with them. And so you see that Jesus Christ, this is common, normal. Like, you know, Jesus Christ is so common and normal that people had to identify who is Jesus in the crowd. <laughs> he didn't have like the special robe and like special uh, appearance and like special makeup and all that. He was just like normal man, normal dress and all. So that's why we love our Lord. It's like, you know, it's just normal, plain person and just like you know he just he's just here to do the father's will and just like amazing i mean that's why i just love jesus because he's so amazing uh, he's amazing as a god you know we revere him he's a god and he's lord but he also when he was on this earth as a man he was he was just normal person just down to earth you know people could relate to him the adulterous person could come and uh, she could come and ask forgiveness to jesus christ and uh, people who are sick can come approach him very approachable very open and very friendly and all that so just like we just love a person like that you know just what if we all have such a person in our life and just uh, we can go anytime and say lord um, uh, thank you for this person and that we can just uh, relate to them you know just tell our burdens and that's the holy spirit that we have you know who we can tell everything about what's going on in our life and so here jesus is that friend you know jesus is that close friend here and then what happened you know like lazarus was sick and um, and they told jesus christ Lord, the one you love is sick in verse 3. And then Jesus heard it. He said, the sickness will not lead in death, but it is for the glory of God, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. So Jesus Christ knew what's going to happen because he has the power of foresight, being a God on earth. But he's also a man. He has to suffer like a man. But he's also a God-man. Like, you know, he has these two roles, you know, that he's playing on this earth. So he's saying, like, you know, uh, son of man is going to be glorified, God is going to be glorified, you know, through this life of Lazarus. And so, um, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days. So he's like, he's like, okay, yeah, he's sick, but he's going to die, I know, but I'm going to stay for two more days. So that's God's timing. Always trust in God's timing. Don't, don't um, try to twist God's arms. You cannot, you can never do that. Always trust the wisdom of God. I always say, tell to young people, do you trust the wisdom of God? And second thing I ask them is, do you trust the timing of God? And then third thing I ask them is, do you trust the power of God? The wisdom, the timing, and the power. All three belongs to God and glory to God that he can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do, and how he wants to do. And may God do that in our life. And so here also, you know, Jesus stays two days. You know, doesn't matter. He's still a lot of the earth. You know, he can do what he wants to do. And then he says, let's go to Judea. And all the, all the people are like, disciples are like, hey, they tried to kill you last time. Remember Jesus, you were trying to hide and they tried to kill you with stones and all. And he said, if anyone walks, you know, Jesus in verse 9, he says, aren't there 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. Amen. What a beautiful verse. That Jesus is saying that, hey, if you have my light in you, you will not stumble. It's like walking during the daytime. Can you walk in a new place, like a, like a new place that you've never gone in life, and pitch black darkness, can you start walking? You cannot walk because like, you'll stumble, there'll be a stone, there'll be a ditch, you don't know what's happening. But when you walk in that same place during the day, you will walk very confidently. So, dear brothers and sisters, you will not stumble if the light of Jesus Christ is in your heart. And that's what Jesus is saying. If the light is not in him, if the light is in him, if he sees the light of this world, if Jesus, if you receive the light of Jesus Christ, he is the light of the world. He says, I am the light of the world. He who walks with me will never stumble, Jesus is saying. You will never stumble. You will never fall. And that's the God that we have. And whatever happens to Lazarus' life, don't worry. Jesus is saying, hey, let's go to Judea. Yes, they are trying to kill me. Let's go there. And then, you know, and uh, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I am on my way to wake him up, Jesus says. <laughs> I mean, like, he's saying, hey, I, he's fallen asleep and I'm going to wake him up. See, Jesus knows everything. Before the, even the news comes that Lazarus had died. And so, if he has fallen asleep, he will get well, Lord. Why should we go, Lord? Why should we risk our life? I mean, like, if he's fallen asleep, why should we go and these people will try to stone us again? And Jesus was telling about his death. And then Jesus told them, 
plainly in verse 14 he says them plainly now he is clarifying he's saying like hey G lazarus has died and i'm glad for you that i was there so that you may believe so let's go so he's saying hey i'm going to do something amazing watch me come with me so that you can have more belief in me see that's the thing even after the disciples were like following jesus christ almost three years but jesus is saying like hey you may believe so that means god wants to increase our faith through the things that he does he wants to increase our faith so that through the the resurrection here of lazarus i mean not resurrection the raising of lazarus god wants to increase the faith of the disciples and uh, thomas said hey let's go to so that we may die with him so like okay lord fine we'll also die with you so this that heart like you know yes thomas is someone we call doubting but here he says like hey let's go that we may die with him ready to die for jesus die with jesus okay but uh, they eventually died for jesus like you know like you know thomas uh, he died in chennai as it says you know he came to chennai you just imagine the man who was talking to jesus came to nearby chennai and he walked in the shores of india and he spoke about jesus christ and just he came and he died in chennai so what a great god we serve that he loves india he loves uh, people and he sent his disciples to here and uh, thomas didn't died at that time he ran away when jesus was arrested but he definitely died when he came to india and he was speared to death in chennai and so verses 17 onwards let's look at verses 17 to 27 <clears throat> when jesus arrived he found that lazarus had already been in the tomb four days so they buried him so like those days you know 20 miles is like you know is like two days journey so jesus uh, delayed by two days and then he walked for two days you know so it would have been the four days you know four to five days i would say you know so they would have he died and then he buried so it's four days you know so almost like four to five four to six days you know we can estimate there so jesus christ goes there and then many of the jews had come to comfort mary and martha about their brother just imagine losing young brother um, to mary and martha it just have broken their heart they would have like because they loved jesus christ they they were like you know look at martha as soon as martha heard jesus was coming she went to meet him but mary remained seated in the house then martha said to jesus lord if you had been here my brother wouldn't have died yet even now i know i mean like she's like lord if you had been here my brother would not have died you healed the sick you raised the i mean like dead people and you could have you could have prevented my brother from dying because you could have healed his sickness and so she she was so she had so much of faith in jesus christ so i'm going to look at the faith of martha with this four or five things you know i have five points here about talks about the faith of martha yes we martha gets a bad thing you know with luke chapter 10 we're saying like hey mary chose the good part martha martha was worrying you know trying to cook and trying to get uh, comparing herself with mary and all that but look at the faith of martha here i just love the faith of martha and uh, we need marthas we need marys we need all types of people to serve god okay and so here verse 21 she comes running and said lord if you have been here brother would not have died what a great faith she had and now look at verse 22 this is even bigger faith what she's saying yet even now i know whatever you ask from god god will give you <laughs> he's saying lord if you go and ask the lord jesus if you ask the lord he will give it to you so she is like she knew i mean she didn't know but she she had faith that she, god if jesus asks lord raise my raise my friend lazarus god would have raised lazarus and so here we see that's the second faith and then verse 24 and then jesus says your brother will rise again <laughs> your brother will rise again and martha replied to that i know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day she said yes lord i know he's going to raise one day in the last day like you and me you should all remember that we are all going to be risen that uh, we are going to have new bodies you know when we'll be raised in the resurrection day they'll all be raised all the people who died in christ they will be risen again and i will talk about that in a little bit but now let's finish this and then verse 25 jesus says this amazing statement i am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me even if he dies will live everyone who lives and believes in me will never die do you believe this she's like do you believe this martha do you believe this that i am the resurrection and life do you believe that even if you die that you will continue to live do you believe this and she said yes lord 
I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes to the world. Amen. She believes that Jesus is the Messiah, the Savior who comes to the world. Only He can save you and me. And Martha believed that. So these five things Martha believed. She believed in the resurrection and life. She believed that even if she died, she will be alive. She believed that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. She believed that her brother will rise again. What a great faith she had. And believer, brother, friend, you also, when you die, when we die, you know, we will be raised again. We will be raised again. So you might ask me, what happens to a believer when he dies? What happens to a believer when he dies? The Bible says, to be, to be away from the body is to be at home with the Lord. That means, the moment a believer dies, he goes into God's presence. There are many teachings which say there is something called soul sleep. They will sleep and they will, uh, there will be a time when they will be in the grave. And uh, no, the spirit, the real person in me, I am, my body will go to the grave. Right? And it will be risen again one day. But my spirit, when it's dead, the spirit goes to the Lord immediately. In the book of Job also it says, like you know, the spirit goes to the Lord. And that's the thing. That is the thing, like when Jesus is saying, you will live, that means my spirit will live. Even today, my body could be dead, but my spirit will live. That's eternal life. So we experience that even my spirit is alive today. And you know, that's the thing, that the resurrection power of God is available to us even today. That I am crucified with Christ, but no longer I who live, but Christ, the risen Christ who lives in me. The risen Christ, the resurrected Christ is living in me, in you. And he's alive today. And the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in us, is in us today, it says. Amen. So that's the thing. So we are having this resurrection power in our hearts today. We are alive. We are not dead. And I will talk about that a little bit in a few minutes because we have to cover the next few things, you know, and then we'll come there. Verses 28 to 37. And suddenly Mary comes to know. The teacher is here and she comes running again. She comes and falls at the feet of Jesus Christ and says, Lord, she says the same thing in verse 32. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She also says the same thing. Like Martha, she says the same thing. And then everybody who was crying with them, following them, they came, to, came with them. And then, you know, what happens in verse 33? When Jesus saw her crying, the Jesus who had come with her, uh, the Jews who had come with her crying, he was deeply moved in the spirit and troubled. Jesus was deeply moved. He was angry that the death would put an end to his friend. And he was deeply moved in his spirit, it says. The deeply moved in the spirit, it says. And he was troubled, it says. Where have you put him, he asked. Lord, come and see. They took Jesus and verse 35 says, Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible, right? Jesus wept. So Jews said, see how he loved him. And again, verse 38, you know, when Jesus was deeply moved again, came to the tomb, it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. So three places it says, Jesus was deeply moved, Jesus wept, and Jesus was deeply moved again in verse 38. Now, why did Jesus weep? Many people say Jesus wept because Lazarus had died. I don't think so. Jesus didn't weep because Lazarus died. Because Jesus knew that he's going to raise him up again. Because he already told the disciples that he's going to raise Je uh, Lazarus and all. So why did Jesus cry? He cried because he saw his suffering friends. He saw his friends crying. And what a great God we have. This tells about the heart of God. This tells about the heart of God, dear brothers and sisters. That he is not someone you know, who is standing distant in the time of your suffering and pain. He is not, you know, God is not... Not, please don't think God does not understand your pain. Don't think that God does not understand your suffering. And what God is doing here, He is weeping with them. He is weeping with these people. He is moved with them. He is, he is angry at death that caused the end of His friend here on this earth. And that's the thing. In Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, it says that we have a... Chapter 4, chapter 4, verse 15, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but the one who has been tempted in every way as we are at the distance. So he's, he's, he's able to sympathize in our weakness. He able to sympathize in our weakness. So what is your weakness today? What is your struggle today? What is your pain today? What is your tear today? And look at Jesus Christ. 
he sympathizes with you he is interceding at the right hand of the father with you and that's the thing we have to understand that god is sympathizing with you and me dear brothers and sisters this is the heart of god what a great god we have the god who sympathizes the god who understands your pain and here jesus christ is understanding the pain of of losing their only brother you know the pain of mary and martha god understands and you might have lost someone close to you you might be in disappointment or in pain i am telling you jesus understands and he is there with you weeping with you he weeps and he rejoices when we rejoice he understands our every thing that's happening in our life every temptation that you're going and you're feeling small and you're feeling full of shame i'm telling you jesus is there near you and he's like the good shepherd who carries the carries the sheep when it's hurt he puts it on his shoulder and it nurses them when they are weak when they are tired when they are in pain what a great god we serve and that's the heart of god that's why i say like you know john gospel is such an amazing gospel it tells us about the heart of god repeatedly about the heart of jesus christ now let's go to verses 38 to 44 38 to 44 and then a dramatic scene where jesus christ raises lazarus from the dead and jesus he says remove the stone and you know in the, in, the, in the king james version it says lord it stinketh that means there's a smell coming it's like you know like martha is saying lord if you open like you know the, the, it's been smelly it will be smelly for four days and it's dead he's dead and jesus says, didn't i tell you if you believed you would see the glory of god if you believed you would see the glory of god dear brothers and sisters maybe it's a verse for you today if you believe you will see the glory of god are you not able to see the glory of god today and you know why because you want to increase in your faith lord increase my faith lord so i can see your glory and that's the thing we need we all want to grow in faith it's not our own faith it's not a self generated faith it is not a self manifested faith it's something that we receive from god as a gift lord i need faith lord so i can believe you and that's the thing and they removed the stone and jesus christ says this prayer usually you know jesus is saying like i i pray this out loud because people will understand but you know he doesn't pray he's that means you know jesus had a habit of praying in the spirit the bible says you know pray in the spirit pray without ceasing and so jesus had that habit i believe so here he is saying father i thank you that you heard me i know that you always hear me but because the crowd is standing here so that they may believe you sent me i am praying like this so jesus had to pray loudly so that the people will believe that jesus christ has a connection with the father but other than that most of the time jesus would be praying in the spirit So what a great privilege that we can pray in the spirit today that you can pray in the spirit as you're walking as you're driving as you're cooking but i pray that you will not use only that as a prayer time as you're walking and cooking and driving but let's also have a like dedicated time where we can get familiar with the voice of god as we know the lord as we are receiving strength from him his energy is being imparted to us you know the process that god is doing in us so jesus says lazarus come out he says hey lazarus you come out and the man dead man came out bound uh, hand and foot with linen strips stripes and his face cloth face wrapped in a cloth jesus said unwrap him and let him go amen jesus says untie the knots and let him go unwrap it like remove that thing that that wrapping set is on him just let him go what a picture it says there are two pictures here it says first is it's a physical death the death has been jesus has a power over death death is the final enemy the bible says how oh, death where is your sting it says like you know like death is the final enemy there's everybody in this earth you know they want to live a life everybody has a will to live right everybody in this world nobody says i want to die everybody has a will to live everybody has hope but a christian will not fear death because he is has a savior who has put end to death there is no more things you know there is no more fear of death Jesus Christ has conquered death we are more than victorious through Jesus Christ our savior and that's the thing we don't not afraid because for us it's just a change of address like what is death death means change of address we die here our address gets changed to heaven to be away from the body is to be at home with the lord and that's what it means so i pray that you as you believe in Jesus Christ that fear of death will be gone fear of death will be gone and then we can enjoy our life in the presence of god that we know that as i am enjoying my eternal life here i am going to enjoy eternal life there also 
So in, eternal life is not something in the future, like I always say. It's something now, today. And now, also, this talks about spiritual death. I already talked about the physical death. It also talks about the spiritual death. The Bible says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, we'll come there one day, very soon. And we were dead in our trespasses and sins. So wages of sin is death. That means it's a spiritual death. We all died. Everybody is disobedient in this world. So God can show mercy, the Bible says. So, so the thing is that we are all dead in sins and trespasses. We all went astray. We all thought what is right for us and we, we, made, we made our own way. And so everybody in this world is dead. And so what? The experience of Lazarus is an example that when we trust in our Savior, even though it could be smelly, our life can be worst. It can be as smelly as Lazarus was smelling. God can give us new life. He can unwrap us. He can give us. The decay is not there. The decay is gone. And the impurities are gone. God has washed us pure, white as snow. He does not remember our sins anymore. He comes and he gives us new life. And that is the life. That's why Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he's dead, even though he's spiritually dead also, you can say, will live. Amen. I don't know where you are. Are you dabbling with sin? Are you ashamed of sin? Are you being unable to come out of sin? Is there a habitual sin that is coming after you? More you make a commitment, it's coming after you. I tell you, the power of the resurrection of our Lord is alive in us. He is alive in us. The resurrection power is in us. And that power, the Lord will give us the power to overcome. Because He died for our sins. That habit, that habitual sin, that Christ has died for that. That we believe Him saying, Lord, I believe you, Lord. I turn to you, Lord. Cleanse me, Lord. Help me to walk by the Spirit, Lord. Help me to be obedient to your voice. Help me to follow you, Lord, my shepherd. Help me not to go astray. At morning, at evening, at night time, I should not sin with anything, Lord. Any object or anything, any person, Lord. Help me to come out of it. If you can confess and repent today that Christ wants to set you free. And he's raised Lazarus from the dead. Why will he not raise each one of us? Each one of us from the dead deeds and the dead works that we might be in. I pray God will do that. And so here, as we go on, we'll read the last five uh, few passages, verse 45 to 57. And these people are trying to kill Jesus Christ because the Pharisees, they were the religious leaders, not the political leaders. The political leaders were Romans. They are afraid the Romans will come and take power and give it to Jesus Christ. <laughs> they thought that they will make Jesus Christ the religious leader instead of, uh, the Pharisees because they were saying uh, verse 48 if we let him go on like this everyone will believe in Jesus <laughs> so they are afraid that everyone will believe in Jesus and they will start to become Jesus will become a religious leader and so they wanted to kill Jesus see how cruel it is the religious system the bondage of certain religious systems even today I see so many places I don't want to give examples but I see so many people in bondage so, sometimes even in churches people are in bondage to certain uh, a certain elder or certain person. Sometimes people are today in church, they are in bondage to certain rituals, certain objects, certain idols. They are, uh, they are bondage. What a sad thing. And the people in the power, like you know, the people who have money power and people power, they'll try to kill Jesus Christ. They're trying to kill Jesus Christ. And you know what says? The Caiaphas, you know, he's the high priest for that year. He says in verse 50, you know nothing at all. You are not considering that it is to your advantage that one man should die for the people rather than the whole nation perish. He did, this, he did not say this on his own, but being high priest in that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation. What a great thing. Even the slip of the tongue, even when he says like evil things, God is prophesying using that as a prophecy. That means like you know, he is prophesying that Jesus Christ is going to, one person is going to die for the nation. So one person is going to die for the whole world. That enemy of Jesus Christ, you know, he says these things. And so that is the thing. One person died for the sins of the whole world. Go and tell your friends. Go and tell everybody that one person died for the whole sins of the world. And it's written here clearly and it's spoken by the enemy. And so this is what's happening. You know, we saw and then they're coming. They come, the people, the Jewish Passover is coming and people come to purify themselves. You know, if you remember Apostle Paul also, he used to come before the Passover. He used to come to rush to Jerusalem and uh, there's a process, ritual process where they purify themselves. This is as part of the system of Passover. So they come and tomorrow we'll see another exciting chapter, chapter 12 and God lead us. You know, so what all we saw today? 
We saw that we will never stumble with Jesus is in us because he is the light who is in us. And we saw the faith of Martha in Jesus Christ. And then we saw that Jesus wept for the suffering family and he weeps in our situation. And then we saw that Jesus can breathe life into the dead. Not only the physical death of Lazarus, but also the people who are spiritually dead, Christ can set us free. And then finally, we see that one person died for the whole world. Shall we pray? And we'll ask, Lord, Lord, that resurrection power is available, that I am, we are dead with Christ, we are buried with Christ, and we are risen with Christ, according to Romans chapter 6, verse 4. So, we are risen with Christ. So, cheer up, dear brother and sister. Rejoice! That Christ has risen and is risen in your heart and is living in your heart. What more good news we need. It's a glorious good news. That like as Lazarus was raised up, we've been raised from our sins, from our old deeds, from our bad deeds and everything that Christ has set us free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. When he said, untie the bonds and set him, let him go to Lazarus, the same Lord is telling, unwrap the worst, the decay and let you go. God wants to set you free today. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have in you. Lord, we cannot earn it. We cannot work for it. We cannot buy it. We cannot do it. But Lord, we thank you for the gift, Lord. We thank you for your gift. We thank you for your gift, Lord, that we receive it, Lord, today by faith. We thank you, Lord. We receive. Lord, we identify that we are dead, Lord, in our sins, Lord, that we are buried, Lord. We are crucified with you. We've been buried with you. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that we are risen with you. Lord, help Allah, every dear brother and sister who is watching, Lord, to experience that risen life in their heart. That they will go away, Lord, with joy. And Lord, the mountains will sing, Lord. Go, that as we go forth with joy, Lord, the mountains and the hills will start singing, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence in us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray.